One of the things I so enjoy is when God makes a decision to gather his warrior women, his wailing women, his women that are fierce, that are humble, that are teachable, that are accountable, that are ready to jump in the ring, the women that are fit for the fight, the women that say, that say here I am, send me the women that volunteer for the army of God and jump in with their whole heart. And I have met so many incredible women this year, Esther's, in this movement called Don't Mess With Our Kids. In fact, during this broadcast, go to that website, don'tmesswitharkids.us. You can also go onto ctnonline.com and there's a drop down bar and everything is linked on there. But I was invited to go to California for an ambassador training. And I went to listen and observe, and one of the women that I could tell that God's hand was on, that she was an anointed, she was passionate, she was a leader, and she just flitted around and worked the room like a Jesus boss, uh, was Naomi Van Wick. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Jennifer. Wow, that's quite the introduction. <laughs> well, you were adorable. From the back, I saw these beautiful curls, and then when you got up and spoke, I said, she's a lioness. I love it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I think your story is so powerful. I have been, I've heard you share it now four or five times. And I, I'm like, I have to have her so that our audience can hear her. God's stories are so needed. And you know, sometimes the Lord says, hold it, hold it, hold it with your story. Mm -hmm. And then he says, release it. And I, every time you speak, I just hear chains falling off, mm. the captives getting set free. I feel like you are literally like a defibrillator that's bringing mm. life into women that have thought God can never use me because of the decisions I've made. And so before we talk about don't mess with our yes, kids, yes. I want you to share your story. Sure. Well, Boy, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Where do you start, right? You grew up. Um, I grew up, yeah. So I am the oldest of nine children, wow. and um, I actually have a twin brother. Oh. And my mom uh, homeschooled all of us, so it was it was a wonderful upbringing. Um, my dad was a pastor, and we were taught, you know, the Bible and to pray, and we memorized chapters of the Bible. Honestly, um, it was a lot of um, religion. It yeah. wasn't a lot of the spirit. Yeah. It was a lot of the letter of the law. I felt like Saul. Yes. <laughs> I'll get into more of that later. But um, when I was 11, almost 12 years old, um, I'll just get straight into my story here. Good. Good. <laughs> um, a 16-year-old girl in our church, in my dad's church, um, had a crush on me. And I had never heard of anything about lesbian, homosexual, I didn't even know about relations between a boy and a girl. I was homeschooled. I only knew the people in my dad's church, lived a very sheltered life, yes. really. My parents were trying to protect me. Um, so my dad told me to go read about Sodom and Gomorrah, which was oh a little boy. bit like, what? <laughs> oh boy. I, it was kind of a culture shock. I, I still didn't really understand even about what this lifestyle was. Of course, I had no feelings for her. I just thought this girl was my best friend. Yeah. Um, and I was forbidden then to never see or speak to her again. Um, and my dad said, I think he had probably well intentions, um, but it was really a word curse. He said, this is what God is going to use to destroy your life. Mm. And, and honestly, I didn't realize what those words meant, um, but that was the beginning throughout my growing up. I had different girls pursuing me. Um, and I had a rocky relationship with my dad, um, not because of that, but um, there just, there wasn't, I didn't have the bond that a father and daughter should have. Yeah. Um, so because of woundings in that, you know, I was probably more susceptible to it. Yes. But, um, you know, I was the goody two shoes, honestly. I mean, I was my parents' star child. <laughs> um, so the enemy knew he couldn't get me with, you know, drugs and smoking and drinking or sex with a boy, honestly. I wild was very, life. I was not a wild girl yeah. at all. I was very clean, straight, narrow path. Firstborn pleaser, Yes, right? yes, people pleaser yeah. to the hilt. I mean, I, I never got in trouble, honestly. I just wanted to please my parents, please the Lord. Um, but you know, the enemy he does, he looks yeah. to kill, steal, and destroy. He and he was, um, he was little by little working on me to get me comfortable with that lifestyle. 
because over the years I, by chance, would become friends with girls and then I'd find out that they were a lesbian. And, and it was so hard for me because I'm like, wait, but you're just my friend and then can I be your friend? And, and so it kind of began this like, oh, I don't want my parents to know that I'm friends with this girl because she happens to be a lesbian, but I'm not a lesbian, but she's my friend. And so um, anyway, I was in my 20s now and I was, you know, working and I had a, a job and I traveled a lot and my boss was a lesbian um, and she just became my best friend. Of course, I didn't realize at the time she was in the lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it became an emotional a bondage, an emotional attachment. Um, and, you know, before I knew it, you know, we were full blown into a lesbian relationship. Um, and, you know, the Bible says sin is fun for a season, yes. and it was. I finally felt like I had somebody that, that loved me and cared for me and that nurtured me, that understood me. Um, we bought a house together. We adopted a kitty together, a dog together. I mean, <laughs> we, we were on the path to marriage, yet I, I always knew I wanted to have a family and a husband and, a, and children. I'm the oldest of nine, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, God is so good and so gracious that I, I didn't continue in that lifestyle, but it wasn't without a lot of hard, um, some hard roads. Yeah. And so, you know, like I said, it was, it was fun for a season, but there was a battle going on yeah. in my soul. And because you had the word in you. you, had, you I had, had the word in me. I mean, and the word will not return void. That's right. And so thank the Lord I had the word in me. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Know? Um, because my, there was literally, I mean, I remember one day, um, one evening, my girlfriend was upstairs in our bedroom and I was in the kitchen and, and my heart, I just, I took a kitchen towel and I just was like, this is my soul. I was just like silently screaming out, like crying out to God going, my heart is ripping in two. I love this woman, but I can't stay with her. Right. And it was, and honestly, it was like, it's not like I fell out of love with her or got upset with her or it was literally, I had to make a choice. Yes. Am I gonna choose God yeah. over my own heart? And, and I knew that that was the right thing to do. And, and so I wrote her a letter, you know, and I said, I put my first love on the back burner and I can't do this any longer. And it was probably the hardest decision I ever made, yet I know it was the best decision. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a quick decision and all of a sudden it's all done. No. <laughs> I mean, first off, your hearts are, are intertwined. You yes. know, it's, it's a soul tie that has You're to be right. broken. Um, but because she was my boss and we worked together um, and we owned a house together, it was a lot of physical unraveling that had to happen. Um, and then it was a lot of emotional unraveling. Yeah. So it was, it was many times it felt like, you know, I'd take two steps forward and then three steps back. And, and so it was, it was honestly probably a year or two of unraveling um, before I was really, you know, set free from, you know, from that relationship. But then God still had to heal my heart, you know. There was just so many wounds and so much brokenness. Um, but the Lord was with me yeah. the whole way, He's the so whole way through. Naomi. He's so, so faithful. I, I often say, you know, whatever, with whatever issues I have, and this show is not about me, but I say it took me generations, uh, I'm sorry, decades mm. to get over father issues, decades. Yes, yes. And, and God, there's still things God's doing in my heart. It, de deliverance just isn't this quick fix. Right. It, it, it is letting the Holy Spirit continue to heal and mm. heal and go to the layers and go to yes. the deep places and the dark places and the things you've stuffed and the secrets that you've kept and the shame that you carry. Yes. And, and so God's so faithful and you had to, you didn't just make a one-time choice. It wasn't a one-time letter. It was many days yes. you got up and you had to take up your cross yes. and follow him, trust, you for, trust him for your healing and your yes. full deliverance. Yes. So Ephesians says that, uh, God is greater than our hearts, which Amen. means He's greater than our emotions. Amen. He's greater than our feelings. And there's so much we could talk for three programs about your victory mm. story and, and how you went through that. But I wanted you to lay that foundation. And then I want you to, now I want you to talk about, uh, I'm sure there was a season you thought, okay, I'm out of that lifestyle, mm -hmm. but will God ever give me a husband and a family? And um, you know, will they forgive me? Will my husband overlook this? All those things. Because the enemy always wants to remind yes. you of your past. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, God made me with somebody that I've always been very purpose oriented. And so I remember when I finally got, yes, it's a process, yeah. right? Um, 
but as I was working through this, I kept going, Lord, like, how can I fulfill my purpose, your purpose for my yes. life? Like, I've so blown it. And I remember reading about David in scripture, and there's a verse that says, David fulfilled God's purpose. Yes. And I thought, thank you, Lord. <laughs> like, he totally blew it, yes. right? Murder, adultery, but yet he was still called a man after yes. God's own heart, and he still fulfilled God's purpose. And that gave me so much hope and joy. So I was like, okay, Lord, you can still fulfill my purpose and redeem it all. And, you know, I think I should just share, it's so per, super important about forgiveness. Yeah. Because I had to forgive myself. Right. And, you know, back when I was in the lifestyle, it was totally in the closet. I mean, now it's very out there yes. and kids do it to experiment. When I was doing it, it was very much a shame. Yes. So I had not only to forgive my sin, but I had to forgive the shame and the guilt. Yes. And um, the Lord is so beautiful because, because of some of the struggles, you know, with my dad, I had um, a tendency to be angry and bitter and almost have, almost have a hatred towards him, honestly. Yeah. And when the Lord was showing me, like he literally just gave me a picture of the Lord on the cross. And he was just like, you know, I have to crawl to the foot of his cross and his blood is dripping off the crown onto me individually. Mm -hmm. And it's not my family. It's not like I'm forgiven under my dad, right? I'm forgiven. It's me. That's right. And so as the Lord showed me how much he had forgiven me, I was like, oh, wait, does that mean he's forgiven my dad? <laughs> and honestly, I was, I remember like screaming out going, no, Lord, this is not fair. <laughs> like after all that he's done to me, how could, how could you forgive him? <laughs> you know, but the Lord is so beautiful because, because of my great sin, right? It says she who has been forgiven much loves much. Yes. And so I'm so grateful um, for the Lord's forgiveness Amen. for me because of the Lord's forgiveness for me, he then gave me the ability to forgive my dad. And so I just, I kind of share that because I feel like so many people can struggle with even forgiving themselves, right. let alone someone else. And honestly, I couldn't truly be free if I still hung on That's to right. unforgiveness of myself or shame or bitterness, right? And the Lord says, those who look to him are radiant. They're never covered in shame. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that is probably the first step in me finding my purpose was I had to fully recognize who my identity was in Christ. And it says we are a new creation yes. in him. The old is gone. And so I am just, I'm just so, so thankful that, you know, the Lord doesn't remember my sin any longer. Yes. He doesn't see me. <laughs> he God. does not see me as that person any longer. Right. Thank you, Jesus. He has made me a whole brand new person. And um, I'm so I'm so thankful. It was you know a lot of like okay is is there going to be a guy that wants me? Yeah. <laughs> you know how are they going to look at me and are they going to question and judge and um, and so yeah I I I went through some guys that you know I tell them the story and I would never hear from them again. <laughs> <laughs> they would disappear and I think oh no. But then I'd be like they're not the right one. They're then. not the right. They're one. not the right one. That's they right. they don't understand forgiveness. They don't understand what it means to be That's a new right. creation in Christ. Um, so, you know, some people go, wow, it took you a long time to get married. I was almost 37 before I got married. Um, but the Lord knew I had a lot of healing to do. I That's didn't, right. it was, that was about 10 years later from when I got set free from the lesbian lifestyle. Yeah. So I needed 10 years to get healed and, and set free. Um, and he's a jealous God. He probably just wanted you all to yes, himself. Yes, he, he wanted me to himself. And, and I needed that. Yes. I needed that. And I realized, you know what, even if I didn't get married, like I just wanted to fulfill God's purpose That's for right. my life. But yeah, so I, I met my husband and um, he was just amazing. And we got married like four months after we met, actually. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah. And he's blessed you with? And then he's blessed us with two miracle daughters, Esther and Ruth Anna, who are just the pride and joy of my life. So yes, I, I'm just so amazed. God is a God of redemption. He and is. you know what the enemy intends for evil, God will use for good. That's right. And so the enemy tried to keep me from getting married to a man. He tried to keep me from ever bearing children. I had struggled with infertility for years, but God redeems all and it's all for his glory. That's right. Yeah, it's all for his glory. So with infertility, and we'll have to do another show on that another time, Naomi, but how long did you struggle with the infertility? Because that's such a common thing right now. Yes, it is. It is. And you know, and sometimes I would go, oh, was it because of my sin? That's you know, exactly it, what it the was enemy like wants the enemy to would do. Want me to blame myself. Yeah. Um, but you know, I had had, you know, just hormonal issues 
and probably a lot of it actually doing a lot of research, you know, just stemmed from trauma I dealt with as a child. Um, so I won't get into all the medical side of things, but because of trauma, my hormones weren't healthy. Um, so I had been told, you know, that I maybe couldn't ever have kids, but it was always my longing. You know, yes. I, was, I was like a mom already to my siblings. Um, and then my husband actually had been married prior to me and had two sons. And so he had had a vasectomy in his first marriage, not to get too personal. Yeah. <laughs> He's tell not it here, all. but no. We tell it all and come tell home. Tell it all. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I had told him when we were dating that I wanted, you know, to have children. So he had said, well, you know, if, if you think you could have kids, I'll get it reversed. So, yeah, it's a whole other story. But anyway, um, make a long story short, he, he did the reversal, which is not always successful. That's right. Insurance doesn't pay for it. We're totally broke. We spent all our <laughs> money to do this reversal. And the doctor said, okay, well, you know, it looks like it was successful. It'll probably be about a year before you could try to conceive. The very first month we conceived. Praise you, Jesus. So thank you, Lord. I had my first daughter at age 40, and that was with you doing no fertility. We just really felt like we're to believe God for this and not do all the other fertility things. Um, and so we got pregnant right away. So we thought, oh, our next daughter, our next, we'll get pregnant again really quick. But God had another journey of, yeah. of faith. So six and a half years later, wow. um, when I was 46, I had my second miracle daughter. Oh, wow. So yeah, it's, it, that's a whole other segment of the of the faith walk you yeah. think you think you've grown in faith and god says i want to raise the bar <laughs> yeah we stay on the potter's wheel yes yes exactly so i'm so grateful that that is extraordinary it's fascinating and i love the lord um and like i said we'll um, we'll keep unpacking but let's transition quickly into the don't mess with our kids uh you are huge in the movement mm -hmm. it is on your heart and you are running all over from state to state yep, yep. with a microphone screaming, <laughs> come on everyone, get involved. So just in our last few minutes, just share about the importance, how other people can participate, how and how they can join the movement. Yes, yes. Well, you know, I actually, I grew up in a politically active family and so, um, when in 2017 there was you know the me too movement which was yes. so big and i don't know if you remember but on the mall in dc you know the feminists were all wearing those pink beanies yes and my heart was just broken yes i was crying out to god going lord how at our nation's capital can we be letting this happen yes. and i just felt like the lord i have this big beautiful portrait painting of, of queen esther with the scepter right yes. in in where i have my quiet time my prayer time and I look at that and I was like, God is a God of reversal, he is. right? Okay, Haman built the gallows for Mordecai, but who was hung on them? Mordecai, I mean, Haman, Haman. was hung on them, right? Yes. And, um, and so I was like, a reversal has to happen. We need to have a million mamas on that mall, praising yes. God, standing up for their family. And literally like two weeks later, long story short, I, w I got to fly to DC, go to the White House, met, um, so all, all these people, but a side meeting happened with Lou Engel. And he says, I'm getting ready to do Esther Rise Up on the mall <laughs> in a month. Will you come back and, and come and, and, sp and speak? So a month later, I flew back to DC, was on the mall, got to give a prophetic word for the Esthers. I thought that was the fulfillment of my vision. But um, God had so much more, but, and I've had an Esther anointing, you know, so I just, I've, that's been on my heart for, for so long. And um, I got invited to hear Jenny speak. I'd never heard of Don't Mess With Our Kids or Jenny, but I heard her and I was like, I'm already all in. Yes. I'm already doing this. This is my He's heart. He's already prepared me for He's it. He's already prepared me. <laughs> yes, like he prepared Esther. Yeah. So um, it is so exciting because Don't Mess With Our Kids is crossing all religious barriers, yes. all political barriers, because people don't like what's happening with That's their right. kids. They don't have to be a Christian, but they don't want the government overreach. They don't like the indoctrination or what's happening. The books that are on the library shelves, the books that are being taught in school, they are fed up and they right. are saying enough is enough. enough. And we are saying enough is enough. Yes. You cannot have our kids, right? Right. They belong first to God and we are entrusted to care for them. Yes. So we are raising up, we're calling, you know, the Esthers and the Mordecais, the mama bears to take a stand. And let me tell you, <laughs> nobody messes with a mama bear, That's right? right? Yes. <laughs> and her cubs. That's right. So um, 
we, I'll tell you a little side story. We live part-time in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and we have a moose family that is in <laughs> our yard. And I'm telling you, that moose and her twin babies, same thing. Nobody gets in between that mama moose and, those, and, her, babies. and her babies. That's right. And so we believe in we need to be praying and Amen. fasting, and then Amen. we need to take a public stand in the square. And so on, on April 13th, 13, yes. yes, at all 50 state capitals, it's historic. We are having an event on the same day at all 50 state capitals and Washington, D.C. to pray, to repent, to take communion, and to say enough is enough. We're going to say it's like the second declaration, and mm -hmm. we're going to declare the right to our families and to our children, to their medical rights, to their gender, to their you know, education and say the government can't have them any longer. So I'm super excited about it. God is just raising up thousands and thousands of, of families. It's yes. not just the moms. We're teaching the kids how to pray and mm -hmm. how to fast and um, how to build an altar in our home. So the cool thing is April 13th is exactly six months to the day before the Day of Atonement which is October 12th, the yes. most holy day on the calendar, yes. in, the, in the Jewish calendar. And that's the day we're believing for a million voices to be on the mall in Washington, D.C. to do this same thing. And um, when, when people pray and fast, we see God move. Amen. And so just like Esther, she called for them to pray and to fast. Yes. She and did. She took a stand and she look did. at what God did. God did it. God and he's going to do it again, Naomi. He's going to do it. Listen, I want to keep talking. That's the hardest thing about having powerful people on the program, but I encourage you, go to don'tmesswitharkids.us, go to ctnonline.com, the drop-down bars in there, sign up for your state capitol, grab your friends, grab your husband, grab your family, go to the state capitol. We're going to pray for two hours. We're going to see God move, and then also take note of October 12th. It's coming quickly behind, and we are going to go to Washington, and we are going to to celebrate victory. God is on our side, but he needs us to show up. He needs us to stand up and he needs us to speak up. Thank you for watching today. Uh, listen, Naomi has much more to say and she's working on a book. Uh, she has a website coming out that's phenomenal. Pray for her, pray for her family, pray that God will continue to use her voice her testimony and her God story. Thank you for your courage, your bravery, your oh, beauty. Thanks for having You're me. You're an amazing Such a blessing. Esther. Praise God. And thank you for joining us today. I'm Jen Mallon, and I encourage you, come home.